Special presentation from Eyewitness News. These are street stories. Street story. Welcome to this Eyewitness News Street Story special. I'm Walt Buteau. We begin here in Warwick, where the Christmas list for a local family got a lot longer earlier this year after a tearful reunion here at TF Green. <laughs> Joe Dinoco was greeted with a hug. I'd like to introduce you to your sister. That he waited for for 67 years. <laughs> oh, hi, <Ma>. oh, honey. <laughs> oh, <my sister>. Yep. <laughs> but the time before the happy reunion was just as dramatic. This is my husband, how Scott. You, how are you? Family he never met. Hi, how are you? Who was meeting his family. Hi. This <laughs> is Ronnie Dinoco. How are you? Too many things are going through my mind right now. He may turn around and just keep on going. <laughs> Meanwhile, the daughter who helped him find them all offered the first hug <laughs> right after Joe got off the plane. That's his father's side of the... His sister, Tricia, had already talked with Joe several times on the phone, and a street story sent to Southwest Airlines by Joe's daughter prompted a couple of free tickets to help him get here from Florida. But as he walked from the plane toward his newly found family, decades of wondering if this day would ever come, froze Joe in his tracks. I had cold feet since this morning when I got off the plane. <laughs> My brother-in-law. Thank you, sweetheart. This warm story actually starts the day Joe was born, a 17-year-old Mary Andrioni, whose parents said she could not keep the child. A change in state law allowed Joe to solve the puzzle by getting his birth certificate, and soon he was on the phone, hey. including one call to Manny Vincent. Joe told him Manny Vincent was his father's name. When I heard that, I said, Joe, if your birth certificate says this man you will visit from East Providence, you're my brother. And we both sort of broke down. And this is where the story takes yet another turn. And then as we talked on the phone later on. They realized they'd already met about 50 years ago. My big brother. When they worked together. How often did you see him when you worked together? Every day. Every day. I think it's bizarre. It's like a miracle come true. That first hug was wonderful. It's like I, I, I won a lottery. Joe needed help to get to Rhode Island, but we found a pilot flying high without a jet. Lemonade. Before Charlie Cockpit does Broadway For you. on Main Street. Come or fly with me. Oh boy. Off we go. He's Greg Roman, who lost two homes to foreclosure and his business in one very bad year. This year I made $7,000 so far. Oops, there goes a billion kilowatt dam. If I didn't have my partner, I'd be homeless. But as we drove through his current hometown of Central Falls and into Pawtucket, no. he told us getting knocked down made him realize he oh. could help others up. Hello, Providence! He should be in business in two seconds. One, two, one, one, two. My name is Charlie Cockpit. An occasional rain. The singing airline pilot. Some walk by without a look, but there are far more smiles than sneers, and even the suits were spotted joining Charlie's Beat. I'm on the streets of America cheering up everybody. <laughs> I'm so glad he's not flying. <laughs> My job is to sing. Not to fly a plane. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In my mind, everybody, they're bored. Look at the faces there, and then look at them when I leave. I like it. Oh, let that be. You seem to be OK with singing to nobody. <laughs> well, sometimes there's nobody there. And hey, when you put on a show, you got to put on a show. So far, he's brought that show to street corners from Philly to Boston with high hopes to fly even farther and sing on the streets in every city in America to cheer up America. Um, it needs it. While Charlie did his best to sing from coast to coast, a local teen was spinning his way to a wacky championship with a toy you might get in a Christmas stocking. Barrington Zach Gorton could spin and sling and zing his way to a world title at 13. Okay, I think I got tangled. Can you yo-yo while we interview? Yeah. Go ahead. His strings-attached talent went up and down for the first time 
on a day you might wish for during this hot spell. It was like snowing out. So I couldn't go outside all the time unless we were going like skiing. How many hours a day do you think? One or two. Just constant yo-yoing. Yeah. And to get you in the eye of the yo-yo for the first time ever, we're using yo-yo cam. You may remember tricks like walk the dog, barrel rolls, the lindy loop, rock the cradle. Are those still done? That's cradle. In other words, you can't teach a new kid old tricks and still become a world champion. There's just like infinite amount of tricks because everyone just makes up their own. But when you make up tricks, some people name them. I don't really choose to. If I was going to do something like that, like into like this, to like that, to like that. What was that? You got a name for that? I can name it right now. What do you got? Give me some. Walt. <laughs> About the time Zach was competing over the summer in the yo-yo championship, the college student behind these seven miles of lights was just getting started decorating. <laughs> Tyler Horrock's parents could complain about their electric bill, but they don't. How many lights? 62,150. As he tweaks a connection here and a line of lights there. No technical difficulties. He tells us the seven-year Coventry tradition almost ended until he decided to move back home. This year was kind of a spur of the moment. This is spur of the moment? Yeah, this was a quick... 62,000 lights This was a quick moment. setup this year. It's no quick walk in the park to walk the lawn as you dance around the lights and the vital white line. That wire gets ripped out, show's all done. One tenth. That connects to the computer nestled with care among the Disney memorabilia, Tommy the Bird, and Bailey, the hungry home wrecker. Bailey, she's eating my gingerbread house. It's all the way to Indiana, it's the Christmas. An average song takes about two days to program. You can listen to about a hundred songs all dancing with the lights from your car on a low-powered station thanks to a hacked iPod transmitter. So as the lights twinkle, Tommy tweets and Bailey takes out a gingerbread shingle. Hey, hey, no. All you have to do is slow down and enjoy. Are you going to keep adding lights? Going to keep adding lights next year. Hopefully we're going to get a little higher, go up into the trees and stuff. The crazy Christmas house now has 67,000 151 lights. Next on this presentation of Street Stories. You've heard a sound echo through downtown Providence. Tonight, the story behind this waterside jazz man. And these boys of summer did something no other team from New England has ever done. Their story is coming up. Welcome back to a special presentation of Eyewitness News. These are Street Stories. Welcome back to this Street Story special. A local jazz man fills the air here near the Providence Riverfront with his music, but while he was playing for you, he was waiting for some help that would save his life. Richard Price uses the acoustics of Providence. It comes back at me because of the wall. So sometimes I play that way. Sometimes I play that way. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Because you had the echo coming across, so yeah. it's as though there were two players on opposite sides of the river, so it was a really cool. Sometimes I play that way, because I know there's a lot of people down there. And they're always guessing, where's that sound coming from? Then they find me. They find him on bikes. <laughs> by foot. <laughs> in kayak. And it reverberates on the water, and there goes a rower rowing to the music. So what could be better? 
got people now I can call on a first name basis. Hey, Richie, hey, Joe, hey, Morris, how you doing? But the man on the horn has a story behind playing around the world with the likes of Lionel Hampton and Count Basie. One, two, ready, and. Beyond teaching music to children from Portsmouth to Warwick for more than a decade, okay. his sound was close to being silenced by kidney failure. I had to wait about three and a half, almost four years. Very lucky that I got one though. Good echo. But you won't find a hat anywhere near this jazz man. He's just thankful to be playing. Take your money and please give it to your grandkids or your kids. Buy them some ice cream. I'll keep playing until they throw dirt on my face. Coming up on Street Stories. An infection stole this Middletown man's independence, but he did not give up. Next, you'll see his colorful comeback. Then, the twisted talent of a local college student. Welcome back to a special presentation of Eyewitness News. These are Street Stories. Now to a street story about a man who survived a brutal infection, but Brian Red Dog Connors didn't stop there. <laughs> Brian Red Dog Connors lives what he paints. It brings me happiness, it brings me peace, it brings me a lot of tranquility. Four years ago, he was a fun-loving Middletown native, a successful chef, a dad who loved to cook with his son. Then out of nowhere, sepsis infected his body and stopped his heart three times. I, I gotta be here for a reason. You know, I was gone. I mean, you, you make a choice, stay or go, and if I was gonna stay, then I was gonna fight, man. But I used the back of the chair to get my leg in here. If I've learned anything in this world is patience. You know how long I waited to do this? <laughs> Almost three years. The infection stole his mobility. <laughs> but it's easy to see that Red Dog never let go of his spirit. You know what this is? Can, what's this? A high nun. <laughs> <laughs> he taught himself to cook again. <sighs> and then, while trying to paint again, he turned his so-called disability into much more than that. I spilled some of it and I swiped it up like that with my stump and I was like, well, whatever. <laughs> and I started doing that on the canvas. I mix my own colors and it's called ASP, all stump painting. <laughs> Everybody's got something. Everybody has something to deal with. It's how you deal with it that makes the difference. Red Dog's next goal is to get back on a surfboard. Hard work was a key element behind the success of a local Little League team. The Portsmouth Challengers did something never done before by a Rhode Island nine. Nice shot! There you go! Nice cut! Throws and ropes are great. But cue shots get cheers, too. Foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. And you always get another swing. Go, go Danny, go, Danny, go, Danny. Nice play. I think exciting and pretty cool. They're thrilled. So are their parents. I mean, you can see it on their face. Heads up. And our kids can hit the ball, too. Under it. There you go. There you go. Look at that grab, huh? I love baseball. It's my favorite sport in the whole wide world. How well they play is only one reason Portsmouth made it to the whole wide world series. Let's go, let's go. It was also about what they do off the field. Get the ball. All right. Good throws, good throws. There you go. We try to keep them together and just involved with baseball. Hit the cut, hit the cut, Ryan. They've been to Fenway a number of times. Where they don't always hit the cutoff, man. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You know, when we have a couple of them come here, we'll show them how to play. Their fans' appreciation is equaled by their own expectations, thanks in part to baseball. Yeah! Because I ain't going to home run. You're going to hit a home run? Yes. In Williamsport? Yes. I believe that the only limitations these kids have are the ones that we set on them. You're calling the shot. Yes, I do. Good practice, guys. Nice hitting. 
Excellent fielding, all right? Keep yeah. it up. Portsmouth on three. One, two, on three. three. Portsmouth! Yeah. Right. Keep in mind, a trip to the Little League World Series is more statistically difficult than a trip to the real World Series by the Red Sox. Now, as the Patriots push toward another Super Bowl shot, we discovered some fans turn to their barbers. The back in the Joyler ride, guy. Thankfully gone like Schaefer Stadium and losing seasons are bull cuts and mullets. A lot of kids want their name on their head. With, a, with stars, like stars are coming back. A lot of kids getting stars with the with a mohawk. Oh, hold on, one second. How'd you win that trophy over there? That trophy? It was a barber competition in Worcester. That was the fastest fade. The man behind those quick clippers is Babacar Lett. How do you get Bob from Babacar? Because a lot of people couldn't pronounce my name, <laughs> so they just started calling me Bob. A logo in someone's head. No, it's the spirit, Super Bowl spirit. I'm getting into Patriots logo in my head. Can I cut it? <laughs> Let me Bro, cut it. <laughs> right? One thing that I, I know that nobody never touched my head. I'm just this dude right here behind me, Bob the Barber. No logo for you? Nah, no sir. Why not? You gotta pay to advertise, baby. <laughs> <laughs> of course, even a trophy winning barber like Bob needs a barber. So in the spirit of the Super Rematch, it was game on. The fellow barber said that this guy's head's really big, so it's easier, is that true? It's, it's like a easier. football head. Yeah, basically, he has a Stewie head. If you've seen Family Guy, he has one of those kind of heads. There's a lot more space to work with. Is it supposed to bleed? <laughs> you did the Eagles? Mm -hmm. You shaved that after week three? <laughs> so you wanted a New York Giant emblem back there? <laughs> Let me just do one in your, in your beard, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Just the logo on your beard. I hate to say it, but if they lose bad, you're just going to shave the thing off? You're going to no, keep it? No, I won't. I'll still keep it on because... Win or lose? Win or lose. That's my team, so it doesn't matter. They couldn't talk me into a logo, but who needs a trimmer when you have an editor? Next on this presentation of Street Stories. Tickling the ivory, even though this musician can't see what he's doing. He'll see how this twisted talent does it. Welcome back to a special presentation of Eyewitness News. These are Street Stories. Our last stop tonight is the piano bench of a local musician who took a rare syndrome and went viral. And Patron started playing piano when he could barely reach the keys. His mom tells us that's also when he became a bit of a stretch at family parties. He used to do these little antic tricks. Bring my arm right across my chest like that. Just tuck the elbow into your side. Sticking the shoulder blades out of the back. Over your head like that. And touch the bottom of your right ear. God, you gotta kill me. Short. Just fooling around with my friends, and that's I knew I was more flexible. So, one day in band class, he aimed those crazy rubbery joints at a keyboard. You can't see the keys right now. I cannot, no. How do you do that? He practices facing forward with his hands crossed, then cranks those elbows and wrenches his fingers the other way. The way it goes in my brain, it feels like my hands are playing into each other like that, but they're actually both playing down. A somewhat gnarled explanation for a contorted ability, but the twist is he can tickle only two octaves right now. Can you play a whole song, Evan? Can uh, you play us an entire song? I could not. Do you get tired of this one song? No. Not at all. Come on! No, 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 because he plays a whole lot of other ones when he plays straight for me. <laughs> It was, though, playing backwards on YouTube last spring that somehow blossomed one day in September. By the end of the day, I had 100,000 views from Japan alone. Ehlers Danlos syndrome is what makes him so flexible, but he tells us that sounds far worse than it is. What else can you use this for? Any idea? Obviously, it makes uh, spreading suntan lotion on my back that much easier. Uh... <laughs> Did you think this is how he'd use it? Never. <laughs> Never thought he would. In fact, we fought many years about practicing piano, but he does practice backwards. <laughs> Evan's video on YouTube now has attracted more than 700,000 hits. Thanks for joining us tonight. Be sure to check us out online at WPRI.com and also on Facebook.
Have a great night. Stories. We'll live in our street stories.